Okay, so here I am in a forest on the edge of a very busy uh, road. Now, if I turn around and go down this path, it goes deep into a forest that's pretty well protected. Um, this zone that I'm standing in has actually been cut down and is in a stage of recovery. So it's about 30 years into its recovery stage. Um, one study that we could look at is, oh, as I'm getting attacked by a pirate, is, ow, <laughs> that one hurts. Um, we could look at a transect, a line transect. Take a, a measuring tape and go one, two, three hundred meters into the forest from the edge of the road and see how things change. We could look at biodiversity, the change along this transect down this path. Um, we could look at uh, forest cover. There's more light here. Does that mean there's gonna be more forest cover on the floor than in the forest where the big trees are? Lots of different studies we could do. I'll explain more as I get the transect set up. All right, so here's my measuring tape. I'm next to this busy road. I have a volunteer running my measuring tape out into the forest. Okay, I'm still near the road, so I'm gonna do my first sample at 10 meters. Um, I would like to do not just one sample because that won't tell the whole story of this forest, right? I need to decide on a method that's um, as fair, unbiased as possible, and that someone can replicate. So at 10 meters, I'm gonna decide to do five quadrats um, every two meters off the path. So two meters, four, six, eight, you can decide on your own. That's just something that popped into my mind. You could use a random number generator and do random meters off the path. Um, but as long as I get five at 10 meters, that'll give me a nice average for this 10 meter mark. Then I'll do this again at 20, 30, 40. It depends on uh, the increments that you wanna choose for this independent variable. So here we go, I'll set up my, my quadrat and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, you may have seen uh, the video I made about making a simple quadrat. This is that simple quadrat. I found my first spot um, off the path to measure my first, uh, the, the plants in my first quadrat. And I'll do a, a biodiversity uh, example here. So I found my first spot, I'm putting in my simple quadrat. So I have a four meter long string. I've wrapped it around my four pencils along 90 degree angles. As soon as I get to my four one, one meter mark with the string, and I've set up my first quadrat in the forest. So here I am in the forest, and if you can see that quadrat, there's the string. And now what I'll do is I'll count every plant alive, not these leaves, but every living plant in this quadrat. So the number of total plants, and then the number of each species. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those leafy plants. I can use a, a plant ID app to ID that plant. And then I have, I'd have to follow this down, uh, one of, of these. They're all coming from the same base. They look like a bunch of plants, but if you follow it down, it's actually one plant coming out here. That's all I have, one of those, and uh, however many I set up those back there, I'll ID them. And my first quadrat is done. I would continue every two meters back into the forest. So I have five samples from this 10 meter mark away from the road. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue that at 20 meters, at 30 meters, at 40 meters, and so on. Notice the big trees down there. We'll, we'll go down there and have a look at, at what it looks like. And then we'll do a, a Simpsons calculation, Simpsons uh, diversity index, and we'll get a number value for biodiversity at each stage. Now, sometimes you find a place like this, it's so green and so difficult to count. This is gonna be your, your time-consuming quadrat to count. Um, the key is, is not every leaf counts as a plant. We have to get down in here and we'll work our way systematically along this quadrat, maybe uh, lengthwise or small sections you can choose. Now, if I go down in here and I look at this plant, for example, um, right here, I notice that all these leaves are actually coming out of one base. So if it's coming out of one base, this, all this stuff that I see here on the surface is just one plant. And I could ID this leaf. Most of this is actually the same stuff. So it's probably not as high of a number as you think for those plants. Um, and we'd have to have every different plant counted, how many of each different species. 
that one's gonna take some time. So there's where you run into some, some sort of speed bumps doing this stuff. But that's a bit of the reality of look, looking at a biodiversity sample. And just because there's a lot of one type in there, it doesn't mean that there's high biodiversity. It could mean there's actually low biodiversity that's dominated by one species. All right, so that's where we started, near the road where my son is coming with a giant stick to get me with. And we moved down this path uh, and we're looking at how biodiversity or your factor changes as you move into a forest. Just remember to be a little bit safe in the forest because there are bears and cheetahs in this forest. Right there, there's a cheetah following me. Okay, so here I am uh, about 150 meters into the forest. We start to get these larger trees that are pretty well protected in this forest. Uh, the shrubs have spaced out a lot. There is a lot of ground cover right now because we're early spring and there's not a lot of vegetation up there. So another thing to note is what time of the year you'd be doing your study because this will this will shift once uh, all the foliage goes into the trees, shades out of this forest. Uh, this will, I imagine a lot of this stuff won't be able to survive uh, throughout the summer. So um, interesting studies has changed significantly as we've moved from the, the road into a protected forest. Lots of studies you could do. Simpson's biodiversity index is a big one you could do, looking at how things change, the diversity changes as you move in, um, based on a human factor, that road. Um, a, a simple one I've noticed as I've walked into this forest is it's just really nice and quiet back here. I hear birds and things flying around. How are people affected by um, noise pollution? And that could be justification for saying, hey, let's preserve these wild spaces. There's an intrinsic value to them. Lots of cool studies to do, very easy. You could theoretically collect all your data for a major investigation, like uh, an IA for, for your biology or environmental systems lab. Um, you could do it in one day. So uh, a bit of hard work, your hands get dirty, but nice to be out in nature. So I hope this video helped and encouraged some people to come out here and give this one a try. Um, feel free to send me messages. There's lots of variations of this uh, that you could do. And I've tried lots of different things with students in the past. Most of them have been pretty successful. So um, good luck. See you later from Pipera Forest in outside of Bucharest, Romania. Okay, my son is now in a puddle. I better go that way. Bye. I wasn't lying, was I? He finds the best places in the forest to hang out. Say bye, Kai. What? Say bye. Bye. We're finishing up this video. Thanks for your help.